Oh, well, there it is. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, they got the servers back up, guys. So I'm going to get you back into the tutorial and show you what's going on. We're playing the Golden Guardian, uh, spelled incorrectly, G-A-R-D-I-A-N. Should be G-U-A-R-D, but, you know, you do what you have to do. So, uh, here we go, back into the... Outbreak tutorial. As I was saying a minute ago, I showed how my uh, key bindings were all set up. Just real quick, we'll go over that again, just briefly. Uh, number keys are your powers in your first tray. Uh, you can see on the, the bottom right-hand side of the screen that they've got the power setups here. I'll show you how I reorganize that in a minute. My I set key binds my own personal preferences everybody has their own way to play games and you guys I don't believe that there's a right or a wrong but I use the numpads as my directional keys uh, and then I use the nine to go up like if you're gonna jump if I hit nine right now you'll see he jumps all right and then I've got the seven key to go down and that only works for flying there is no there is no duck or crouch in this game uh, Five is an auto run, and so if I hit that one, he'll start running. All right. Uh, then I've got my four and six keys to turn right or left. I've got strafe right or left with the one and three keys. I've got backup key with the two. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, if I hit enter... He's going to select the target closest to him. If I hit the plus, it just jumps through. It'll cycle through the targets that are running up on him. If I hit minus, it takes all the targets that he's got off the screen. Uh, the asterisk key, which is the multiplication key, uh, if you're using this thing as a calculator, selects my closest friend. So if you have any uh, heroes in the game, like let me turn around and look here. There's a hero. If I hit the... Asterisk key, boom, selector. Hit the minus key, unselected. So uh, I do that because that way my left hand on the number keys can be running my powers while my right hand is running the movement keys and allowing me to look around and stuff. I can also do that with the mouse and the right click, which if I hold down the right click and, and I can look left or right, up or down, so on and so forth. Um, right now, we're talking to this contact, and he's giving us an available mission. So then you look over here, and you just click on your mission that you want, and then you can see up here in the top, uh, in the middle, it's got the north, south, east, west key, and you can turn and look towards the direction you're supposed to go. It'll tell you it's 120 yards away, and the little yellow arrow that's out there is telling you where you need to go to uh, do your mission. And if you go to missions, click on the on the mission and say select task, it'll turn your mission thing to red. And that helps out because if you join a large group of people, a team, uh, they can't see your mission unless... As the team leader, you select the mission, and then when you do that, everybody gets the same red arrow. This is where we need to meet up. Everybody locate there. So that's helpful in that sense. Otherwise, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I click down here, leave, and let me show you real quick. First, let me move over a little bit and back up. I'm going to show you how I set up my powers tray over there so uh, there's a little you see this little blue arrow right here if you click that blue arrow it duplicates your powers tray and if you click this blue arrow this is on the second set of powers that you've got this is a prestige power ability called slide let me I'm using my my uh, wheel on my mouse I can scroll in and out to get closer or further away from the character and now uh, with his barren boots that we did in the previous video, which was a character creation, 
If I click on the prestige power slide button, you can see what happens with his feet. Right? Now if I move around, he's sliding instead of running, right? This character that doesn't really work for. He's going to be more of a fly guy than a, a slide guy. So I can right click on that and say remove from tray. And then I can grab the sprint which is down here and move it up here to the right hand side. Okay. This is an experience thing that they've also got. I'm not wanting to hit that by accident so I will remove from tray. This is your temporary invulnerability, which is an, a, a, a bonus for the type of character that I've got, but it's not an attack, so I'm going to put it to the, to the far uh, right side of the tray over here. Then I will pull the brawl over. Actually, I should have just switched the brawl. I could have just done this, right, and it would have automatically changed places. Uh, but I didn't want anything in this tray yet because if I click on powers, you have something called mutagen. This is a power that you don't see down here, but if you click and drag it down, now I have one ranged power, right? This shows powers, this shows uh, inspirations, these are the enhancements that we don't have any of yet. This is salvage, which we haven't picked up any of yet. And then you've got uh, recipes, which we also haven't picked up any of yet because we're still in the tutorial. And we're not going to get that until we're much higher level. But so I would keep the inspirations thing up here because when that pops up, sometimes there are some helpful things that you can use, right? So now with my, uh, with my keyboard, if I hold down the Alt key and press 1, it activates my sprint. <clears throat> Conversely, I can just take the mouse and click on it right if I want to but I like using my hotkeys so that I don't I, it keeps my my hands free for the movement and stuff I can also just hit the zero key or the tin key uh, across the top of your your uh, your numbers not the ones in the numpad but the ones that are above your text and it will activate the power in in the far uh, right hand slot over here which is my temporary invulnerability before we activate that, I will show you this is our hero and what he looks like. This is the Golden Guardian. And I have uh, set my uh, options up to auto remember my keybinds each time I log in with a new character and also to show my name over my head. I only do that because as you get badges, you can put titles under your name, and uh, I role play. I use I use a little bit of the title stuff. But anyway, so if I hit that zero key right now, and those who were with me on the uh, character creation will realize, you know that that actually is all a part of everything that I did. If I hit the uh, delete key on the bottom of the numpad, it will reorient the character to, this, to the camera so that now I'm standing directly behind him again. And then I can use my keys to move him around again. So he can run and he's sparkly. Oh, glorious. We'll run over here and do this mission. And again, keybinds are... are uh, personal thing. Different people like different things. So thank you. This sample will help our research immensely. Since you are new to Paragon City, you should familiarize yourself with the way the hospitals work here. There's an information terminal in front of the Riviera Medical Center next to me. Uh, you need to read. So you click leave and then you look and because I had set the thing uh, to be red, now the, the arrow is red. Now I click on it. Medcom and defeat. The medcom is a state of uh, the art analysis and healing device. It will analyze the current medical status of friendly target and teleport them to the nearest hospital upon defeat. Equipment every hero with a 
Medicom patch is the only thing keeping Paragon City from uh, being overrun. If you have an associate that can revive you, you may wait for that instead of clicking on the OK in the dialog box that appears upon defeat. So uh, I may show you that later. What I'm doing now is with my left hand, I've got the, uh, the forward run key, and with my right hand, I'm using the, the mouse to direct myself. Excellent job. What did you call yourself again? Was it Goldian, Golden Guardian? That's pretty original. You seem, uh, you seem to navigate well, so let me tell you about the city map. Uh, click the map button to bring up the overhead view of the zone, and that shows you that. Click on any area of the map, target it once the companion is in it, say introduce to a new contact, and that automatically puts him in there, and then you can leave. Now, if we wanted to pull up a map, get away from those guys a little bit, I just hit the M key, and it's auto. Uh, that key bind is set in the game to be for everybody the same. And that just shows you the hospital is where we were before. This is the... Uh, PDW ven uh, vendor, and that's the, the Golden Guardian himself. Wait. PDW vendor? Does he have a store? Nope. Is it on this information thing? Nope. That just gives you the basics on moving before the keybinds that I set up. So I think they've got that guy mismarked. Anyway. I will hit the auto run so he'll take off down the street. I don't have to do a dead gum thing, but every now and then check and make sure he's not running into something and getting trapped. Just hit the six key, turn him just gently to the right, and four key to turn back to the left, so on and so forth. When you get close to your guy, you can highlight the guy that you want, stop yourself, and do an auto follow and he'll run over to him. You must be Golden Guardian. I sure hope you can help. First, let me explain you that. Blah, 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 blah. And this is talking about your powers that I already showed you. Uh, and then you can bring up your power screen and, you know, adjust that to however you like. And I say ask about available missions. Uh, learn about how things can uh, be by talking to Professor Hoffman in the front leave. We've already heard all that mess. There's Professor Hoffman, as you can see by the yellow arrow. Click on him, and he's going to give you, if you target, gray names mean the enemy is vastly weaker than you and worth no experience. Uh, green names means that the enemy is two levels weaker than you and worth a very little amount of experience. Blue, they are one level weaker than you. White means that they are the same as you. Yellow means that they are one level stronger than you. Orange means the enemies are two levels higher than you. Red names are three levels higher than you. Purple means that the enemies are vastly superior to you. There are also three different types of enemies at each level. There are minions, lieutenants, and bosses. Minions are the weakest, and you should be able to defeat these easily. Lieutenants are stronger and have more attacks and can take more damage. Finally, bosses are the strongest, and even a boss cons green to you. You are in for a tough fight. <clears throat> now go see Lieutenant McCready and learn about how to deal with your foes. So you can see that my arrows changed over there to Lieutenant McCready. I just click on him and hit auto follow. <coughs> so you're the Golden Guardian, huh? Well, I've been told about you. You need to learn a two thing about combat. First off, you need to target the enemy that you want to attack by clicking on them with your left mouse button or using the tab key to cycle targeted enemies. And I changed that to my plus key in the numpad just because it makes things easier for me and how I do it. Once you have your enemy targeted, you can attack them by simply clicking the power in your power tray or hit the appropriate number key, which I showed you earlier. After you use the power, it takes time to recharge. The icon will go small and grow larger until it returns to its original size. Once the icon is its normal size, the power can be used again. Uh, you can take some practice shots at any of these deactivated drones to get your powers or whatnot. All right, so uh, there's real original for you, right? Brawl might instead of all might. Yeah. So if I hit my enter key, it just takes the target closest to me. I hit num. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Divide key. <coughs> I'm 
excuse me. Ice tea. I hit the divide key and it moves me up on him. So now I have three attack buttons. Let me back up here and I'll show you. So let me look down some. If I hit the first power, which is the mutagen, it's going to be my only ranged power that this character has at this time. And it's a prestige power that anybody's got. Whether you're a blaster, defender, scrapper, whatever, you all get a prestige power. So if I hit that one key, I just threw my mutagen over at the guy, right? So my main attack powers are the two and three keys. Here's a brawl. It's just kind of throwing a blow. See how it gets small and slowly comes back up? Then when it gets up to full strength, you can hit it again, right? Then I've also got my super strength throw. You also don't have to wait for it to come back up, right? So if I hit it and then I hit it again real quick, if you'll watch in uh, this corner down in this area over here where my cursor is, you'll see that it's going to go small and then there's going to be a little red uh, circle that appears around it. It's a broken circle that appears around it. That means that I hit the button again before it was ready to go, but as soon as it's ready to go, I'll show you I'll do with my left hand, I hit the two, uh, I'm sorry, the three key. I hit it again. See the little red line? So that shows you how that works. And you can do that with any of your powers that, that are not coming up yet. So I go back and I talk to Officer Parks again. He's going to tell me to go defeat two thugs in the southwest. Uh, and that's just so that you can kind of get a use for your power. You can see that I'm just running west instead of southwest. And I jump over this wall. See these guys right here? Make sure that there's nobody behind me that's not on this side of the fence. There's not. So if I run up on him, here's the mutagen. Here's the brawl. And here's the super punch. I can go mutagen up close, brawl, and super punch. I've defeated two guys. I can go back and see Officer Parks again. I know that's simple, but this is the tutorial, so uh, it can get much more difficult as you go on into the, into the regular gameplay. <clears throat> Great job, Golden Guardian. You did pretty well back there. Let me explain more about uh, combat, and that's going to give you this information up here in the top right corner, which I'll go over for you in a minute. Um, we're going to take a new contact here and leave this contact, and when we do, you'll see way down there. 212 yards away is my new contact. That's where I need to go to Sergeant Hicks. So this top section up here, other than your chat, your tray, your target, your nav, which is the, the center piece there that's got the uh, the uh, I know what this is. My brain's out of stock on the word. Compass, sorry. Uh, and it also shows you what, you, what your um, either your mission that you're headed to is or the contact that you're trying to get to where you need to go to get there and you'll see those little arrows or, or uh, a little miniature figure of the person or something of that nature but then you've also got your menu key which I've shown you a minute ago and you've got all of these options available to you down here if you go on the menus I'm gonna click off of that circle here shows you what level you are I'm playing a first level character who is a tank uh, you can see I've got three pink bubbles these are your XP line, the pink here. When this XP line reaches the end, it will fill another bubble. The center blue line here is my endurance. Each time I use power, my endurance weakens. The top line up here, the green line, is my health. As I get hit, uh, my health will slowly decline until I'm either knocked unconscious or I defeat the guy and I can take a break. And there is a, an ability called rest, but you don't get that in tutorial or first level. You have to be a second level to get that. So let's run over here and talk to our next contact. All right. So 
he's going to talk about my powers again, and he's also going to show me about inspirations. Okay, there are several different kinds of inspirations. They're only giving me two of them here. This is the heal and the damage. You can pretty much pick out by the color which one is which. For those of you that are colorblind, they've done these little symbols on them. The one that looks like the old 1966 Batman kapow that bursts onto the screen, that is your damage inspiration. The one that has the big plus in the middle of it, it's like the, the, uh, the red cross but it's white, um, that is your heel inspiration. The only time that doesn't work is when you're looking at the difference between sturdy and um, luck. They're both the shield. But anyway, so now we're going to run over to this guy. i got to beat four guys up. And they want me to use those inspirations, but I'll tell you a little secret. You don't have to. We are in the tutorial. And um, these guys are quite easy to beat. ganged up on here, but that's all right. Like I said, even though these guys show as white, they are minion level guys, and having four minions on you, you are a superhero, and they let you know that by showing you minions, not that big of a deal. Okay, so now they want me to return to my contact, and he's going to show me... Level 2. Now, when I go to level up at the uh, trainer in Atlas Park, I'll get the ability of rest drops in my tray automatically, plus whatever else I decide to take. Okay, so good job on those thugs. As a reward, I'll give you something called enhancement. You can use enhancements to permanently improve a power. This is important. So... First, we're going to go talk to this thing so it can explain to you what the enhancements are. And I just uh, right-clicked on it real quick. We're not going to read that because I'm going to show you what to do. Talk to him again. Introduce to a new contact. We're going to go see Coyote. All right, so he's given us two enhancements, and here they are. We're going to click on enhancements. Oh, I've only got one. Oh, that was odd. All right. Go to management. Uh, usually you get two on there. Take that one and put it in your heaviest attack. And what the enhancement does basically is it changes this from a uh, low based attack slightly higher. And you can build these up over time. And I'll show you how to combine them later. So right now we're just going to run down this hill and go talk to my next contact. Ask for a mission. Go in there and clear out enemies and they give you some information on it which you can read on your own later. Using your <coughs> compass at the top of the screen you can always tell the direction you need to head in and you just kind of make your way around the buildings and through the alleys and back streets and stuff and when you get into Atlas Park these back streets and parking lots and alleys are going to be filled with bad guys that are doing bad things that need to be stopped by good guys which are doing good things and that's you when we enter here hopefully I won't get stuck because they had some bugs on that before now it zones into an instance. So we're going to click OK on this. Go over here. I'm going to show you. So uh, Flower Knight is a good guy and she is a, an archer and our job is to help her defeat the bad guys in this building. Right now 
you can see this animation just is a cycle repeat. She's not actually taking damage, as you can tell. If you look in my target uh, in the top of the screen up here, um, which is Flower Knight, you can see her health and her energy. Neither one of them are moving, even though this animation is going on. It's because they're waiting on me to get involved. And then you can see how helpful she is when I get involved. This is just like, I mean, this is what a true hero does. Watch this. Yeah, stand there and cheer me on. So, she's going to tell me that she was overpowered and that she's going to help me now. Oh, yay. Help me defeat these blue guys. I don't know if you can hear that. See that desk there that's glowing? If I click on that, I will find the formula. Pretty sure. She's getting shot at because she ran in without me. That happens when a good guy, I mean a bad guy comes up behind the good guy. Also, when you click on the on the glowy in these missions that we that I clicked on earlier, a lot of times you'll see um, other bad guys come in behind you that are trying to stop you from getting away with whatever the goods are. I can either click exit right up here, or I can run back to the door and go out of the mission. Either way, the same thing's going to happen. So I'll just click the exit, and the instance is over. That's actually one of the shorter ones. There's also a, a longer one where you go down some hallways and twist up some stairs and come down and then back up and then back down and you have to clear all this area out and find the desk in between there on the way to get the formula. <coughs> Throat's getting a little scratchy. All right. So if you look up the top right now, I have no idea where I'm supposed to go, right? I completed the mission. I don't have another mission. So now I can click on contact. This says task complete, return to this contact. If I click on him, he appears, and I know where to go. And I just click the auto run so that I can. I hate running everywhere. Superhero, how come I can't fly yet? Simple answer to that is you are a new superhero. A little bit of rubber banding there. That happens on these servers. Would you like to visit Miss Liberty in Atlas Park? Okay, before I leave, I got something else I want to show you real quick. Well, I'll just tell you about it. I'm not going to go do it with this character. There is a uh, secret badge that the... the original developers put in here in the outbreak area that you could only get when you're in the tutorial. Um, if you want that badge, you know that area where up in the southeast where I was uh, beating up bad guys earlier, the, the contaminated? If you go in there and you defeat 100 bad guys, you will get a badge for doing that. They'll put teams together and Sometimes you can see it in the chat over here, which I'll move my let me move my little video thing out of the way so you can kind of see the chat for a second. And there's a bunch of stuff going on in there with uh, super groups and groups and, and a variety of different stuff. But normally I just have that covered up, and the reason why I do that is so that you're not exposed to anything untoward if they put any... Um, off-color jokes or anything of that nature in there. I don't want that on my Twitch channel. So uh, rather than go after that badge, which I don't really care that much about for this guy, I'm just going to click Go Visit Miss Liberty in Atlas Park. And I will show you how the tutorial ends, and then we'll run a brief mission in Atlas Park just so that you can kind of get an idea
first come in, you have enough experience to level up to two. Go see Miss Liberty near the statue of Atlas. Level up and pick your new power. I say okay. It says, welcome. This character is new and may need a little help in the cities of heroes. Uh, you have the option to flag yourself as need help from other players uh, with a special, specially colored name and title. You also have the option to flag yourself as a helper. Please choose. So I can say help me, none, or helper. Uh, I'm going to do none for this character. Sometimes I do helper. Uh, what that means is that if someone sees me running around and they having trouble with a mission and they, they, they click on my character either in the chat or as I'm standing out there like I am right now, they can uh, click on my character's name and then do um, uh, chat and send a private message to me to ask me a question in the game about the game. And then I can help them do whatever it is they need to do. This is not one of the characters that I'm going to use that for, though. Golden Guardian is going to run up here to the front and click on Miss Atlas. Somebody has a power on that is giving everyone in this area the mist of uh, coverage and, and uh, gives us a little bit of um, stealth. You don't need it when you're up here, but somebody's got it on. So we're going to train up to the next level. All right. So I get to take another power. I can take resi resist physical damage, which was in the character creation is one of the ones that I did not take. I can take dull pain, or I can take punch. And dull pain just means that my health is a little bit more, and resist physical damage is something that all tanks need at some point. But right now, since I'm running this guy solo, my primary concern is going to be how do I beat up the bad guys so that I can get the experience I need to level up. I'm going to take a punch. And away I go. Let me get away from this fella. I'm going to run up here. All right. Um, if you look in my powers tray again, which is over there, you will see here is the punch that I just took. I started with jab, but this is rest. I'm going to click and drag rest into my right hand side of power tray 2. Okay, what rest does. If I've been in a battle for a while and uh, my health is low or my endurance is low and I've got more stuff that I've got to do relatively quickly, I can click that and my character will take a knee. If you look in the, the uh, top corner up here, you'll see, boom, change to immobile, affecting self only. Had I not been at full health, my health would be recovering much quicker right now because I'm in that. When you're in this pose, if someone runs up on you and attacks you, you're immobile. None of your powers work. I can't, like if I hit three, none of my powers are working. I don't even think I can turn off. No, <coughs> I can turn something off. And let me turn it back on. But that's because it's not a um, an attack ability. None of my attack abilities will work right now. I'm going to show you something else now. So, the mutagen that I got earlier, that is not an ability that I think this character is going to be all that interested in. This is an actual P2W uh, field agent. P2W is pay to win. Everything that she has uh, cost influence. And we're not paying cash. Um, everything that's going on in this game right now is free. But if I click on her, show me your wares. Put this in the middle of the screen a little bit. So um, if I click on revoke, I can revoke my mutagen and you'll see that that's right here, uh, I'm sorry, right here in the tray and up here in the prestige attacks. If I click revoke, it takes that away. Click on prestige. Uh, prestige powers, that's it. And then click on attacks. So Trank Dart is um, usable, I think, by science. Throwing knives are na uh, natural 
taser dart is technology, mutagen is the mutants, and the apprentice charm is for the, the uh, magics. Uh, Sand of Mu is, uh, these are different ones for, for other, um, that came from the villains and whatnot, all right? So, for my ranged attack, I typically like, for everybody, either the throwing knife or the taser darts. Um, this guy being who he is, I think he's going to take throwing knife. All right, so that put the throwing knife here. I grab him and drag him down into here, and I'm technically ready to go, but I can also take, see all these that are red mean that I'm not allowed to get those anymore. I have a, I can claim a free, um, <clears throat> this is melee attacks. I can take a Sands of Mew, uh, Undead Slaying Axe, Nemesis Staff, uh, or the black one. And the Nemesis Staff, no bonus, or Nemesis Staff, origin bonus. Um, so for a mutant, you'd want the black wand, which is down here, a mutant or natural origin. You can take the black wand. So I'll claim that. You may be saying, why do I want a magic wand on this guy? I will show you in just a second. I want the wand and the throwing knives to the left side of my attacks because those are my two ranged abilities. And I want my three melee attacks right next to each other right there. I'm pretty much done with her. I need to go see my contact. So if you look in your contacts, you can bring him up. It tells you just where to go. Ask about available missions, put a stop to gang activity in an office, and leave. So now I have a mission. You can see the little yellow star on the top of my uh, nav bar where my compass is. And right now it's just leading me to the door that gets me back out into Atlas Park, at which time that will change and you will see where you're actually supposed to go to find the mission. Looks like it's off to the right here. We'll go this direction. All right. I've been there a hundred times before. I know what I'm doing. So we're just going to go take care of this mission real quick. I'm going to show you. These are the streets of Atlas Park. A little bit of rubber banding here. That happens on these servers. So you see this guy here? He's yellow. That means he's, because uh, he's a lieutenant, Yellow means he's my level, but he's a step between a boss and a minion. So he's not an easy defeat, but... So, I'll show you the other stuff in a minute. All we're doing now is just... This is the button mashing part of the, of the game. And so uh, a lot of civilians uh, on the streets, as you save them, will run up to you and thank you and tell you what a great hero you are. And, oh, you know, some of them have some pithy little comments like, maybe capes aren't so bad. Um, in that particular park area, none of them have comments. Okay, so see that? There's a, a girl right here. I guess that's to say to Tasha maybe Tasha we'll call that Tasha uh, she's being threatened by these two Hellions which Hellions are one of the gang members here we're gonna we're gonna save her before we go in and do our mission because they're white white minions which means they're not difficult to defeat and they're worth XP 
you're awesome. <laughs> that also pops up in your um, chat window, which you can't see because it's behind my video display of this ugly mug that you're forced to stare at while I run this little area. Going into an instance, you get the little load screen. Hmm. These guys are the other low-level uh, gang members. They're known as Skulls. You can see I've got one targeted up here. And uh, if you look at the target, it'll tell you that's a Grave Digger Slicer, which means he'll have a knife. He'll want to get in close and try to cut me. And uh, he's a member of the Skulls. That's what that little parenthesis thing is down below. If I target his friend, he's a Grave Digger Brawler, which means he's a puncher. And uh, he'll get in close to me and try to hit me. Either one of them can pull a gun out if I get... Himself. Go ahead and run in on him. So now the knife, the mutagen, the the trank dart, the taser darts, and the apprentice charm. Um, those prestige short range powers all do the same amount of damage. They're the only difference in them is the name. And that's only based on the origin that you have. I took the knife, which is typically for a natural uh, character. Natural characters are the ones that are trained. Uh, mutant is, you know, comes by his power through birth, genetic um, adjustment. You look at my health bar third level. Look at my health bar in the top right corner there, and when you get third level, you should always run right in, find, I mean when you get A level, you should always run right in, find some guys and go fight. Because if you look at uh, right beneath the health bar, it's given me all those inspirations for free. Activated them for me. Those are attack and aim and damage and all kinds of stuff. There, we've ended the mission. So now I can exit. I'm going to go to, I always go to Alice Park. Uh, if the top one's full and there's multiples that you can go to, take the second from the bottom one. And the reason why I recommend that is because if the top one's full, everyone's next, next one empty is the one that people are mostly going to go to. Or the ones that think they're being smart will go to the very last one. So I go instead of the top one or the last one, second from the bottom. And... Now that I've told you that on a live stream, it's probably going to ruin my little trick, but that's okay. We're all friends here, right? right? Let me run in here and get this guy real quick. Now this lieutenant is, is uh, uh, he's, he's white to me, meaning he's my level, but he's still a lieutenant, which means he'll be, and that guy's gotten his butt kick so he's not all right i'm gonna show you what the nemesis staff and stuff is for real quick one two three guys take the guy in the back and i pull out that nemesis staff okay well i flat waxed his butt with that it's because he's so much lower level than i am that's not the nemesis staff that's the dark wand i'm sorry But uh, <clears throat> in large crowds of people, you can use a ranged uh, attack to sometimes pull a few, pe uh, like some of the stragglers, off of the others. See how I only got one guy coming? That's designed in the AI on purpose. 
If I'm fighting by myself, running some solo missions, that's what you do. You select one of the guys, like this guy is a fallen buckshot, that guy is a fallen buckshot, so they're both lieutenants, you know, not big bosses. But if I pick one of them, rain shoot him, and back up, And if you got a corner or something you can get around behind or whatnot, that helps work that out. That's what your ranged uh, power abilities do for you. Now instead of fighting three lieutenants at once, I'm picking them off one at a time. It's a better tactic than just, Hi! I'm here and you and your two friends are in trouble. Some of your powers have knockback abilities. Some of them have... Uh, disorienting abilities, right? Alright, so I'm going to go back up here to Lady Liberty. Looks like Misty never left. Whoever that is. Train up to the next level. So, uh, between the power level, where you're getting a new power, you have a level where you get to add in enhancement sections like this. All right? Away I go. Once you do that, you click on your enhancements. See how, as I've been fighting, I've picked up a variety of different little enhancements and things? So I can grab this accuracy enhancement and put it on the attack that I've already beefed up a little bit. I can grab this defense one and put it on the temporary and vulnerability to beef it up a little bit. That just means that I'm more resistant to damage, right? Um, I have a use for the fly because this guy's going to be a flyer later. Uh, I don't know whether that's going to come in handy or not, but I'm pretty sure the slow will not. I'll show you what that does come in handy for over here to this chick, click on her, I'm going to go ahead and sell both of these. This top up here is changing, influence now is 696. What that does is it means that I can buy myself a number 5 bonus instead of a number 1 bonus. Manage. Now, which one of my punches do you think is going to do the most damage, the jab or the punch? All right. Uh, you save the enhancements that you can use later. I don't have any money right now or I'd buy another damaged one so I could show you how to combine them. And you can see here that the four that I got here, if I click this up arrow, I have four empty spots that opened up when I leveled. So I'm going to put the big heal and the big damage over here to the right and I do that because these will fill in with the small stuff and I don't waste these if I don't need them. If you go up against a big boss you'll be glad that you didn't use those two in this tutorial because those things can really heal you up or really increase your damage in a pinch. Uh, when you're going up against minions or lieutenants or these small little missions in the beginning not going to need to use those. Once in a blue moon, if I don't have any other heals and I'm about to go down and I want to protect my guy, I don't want him to drop, I can hit that thing. Uh, the other thing, if you look up in the XP section right now, I've got all these pink bubbles going all the way up around the side, and this thing's got this, this uh, blue color, which I told you before the blue up here is endurance. But this blue down here is actually what's known as uh, bonus, um, because I'm a, a prestige uh, player or whatever, they give you these, these bonuses. That means that you're gaining XP a little bit quicker. Uh, if you die in game or uh, if you're knocked unconscious and you have to recover to the hospital, you sometimes get this little red line in there. And what that red line next to the pink line means is you're in debt. That means that you're getting half experience for everything that you're fighting because half is going to pay off the debt and half is going towards leveling and uh, once the debt has been paid off you go back to full experience for everything that you've been fighting 
uh, a lot of times a good thing to do when you've got that problem is to join a team and go running around. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream now and uh, let you guys absorb and think about what we've talked about. And if you uh, have any questions or anything and you pick this up on YouTube, put them in the comments. If you're on Twitch and you watch this on a live stream and you have a question, I'm sure there's a way to contact me. I'm just not sure what it is. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you around.